This video will provide a quick overview of how to get data into Strata so you can start your analysis. We'll also show how you can export and transform your data into different file formats. The easiest way to get data into Strata is to simply open it. The easiest way to get data out is to save it externally. You can also get data in and out of your external databases by creating a direct connection to that database. And finally, Strata also gives you the more traditional import and export functionality for moving data files in bulk. So we'll start by opening up a data file that's already on our computer. In this case, we'll open up a CSV file, but we could just as easily open up other file types, like DBF or Microsoft Excel or Access files. Okay, so we've got a local CSV file open in a tab that we could start working with. However, it's often useful to save the file to your project in order to do things like reduce processing time or create table relationships. To save it, I just need to select Save and then Name it, and now it appears in my project. If I wanted to make a second copy of the table, I could just use the Save As option. Or if I wanted to save only a filtered set, here we'll only look at companies from Illinois, I could use the Save As option again. And finally, if I wanted to save this table to my computer as, a, say, a DBF file, I would simply save it externally. So what we ended up doing was taking the original CSV file, reducing the number of records, and then saving it as a DBF on our computer. All right, now let's take a look at opening a fixed length text file. We can see that the file is opened up in a single combined field. In order to correct this, we'll just toggle to the source view, which lets us tweak our text files. So if this was a text delimited file, like comma or tab delimited, we could change our delimiter and qualifier. However, this is a fixed length field, so we'll go back to the original screen. Here we can set our field breaks and also rename our fields. Now we'll toggle to the design view to set the types. Here we'll change the amount field from a character to numeric type and add two decimal places. Finally, we'll toggle back to the table view where we can start using our data. All right, now let's work on getting data from an external database. We can do this by creating a connection to a database like SQL Server, Oracle, or something else using an ODBC driver. For now, we'll create a connection to a MySQL database on the web. We'll enter in the database location and our login information, and then click Connect. Now in our project, we see a folder which includes all the available tables. As an aside, connecting directly to a database provides a lot of power, like the ability to delete tables. So we suggest that you log in with read-only writes for most situations. Okay, so we can easily open these tables too and start using them as normal. For instance, to create a mark or to sort. If we want to copy a table to our local project, we can just drag the file from the folder into the main project. Similarly, if we had both read and write access, we could just drag in local files to copy them into the database. And finally, to remove the connection, we just right click and select remove. All right, now let's take a look at getting data in from the web itself. Here's a web page of Apple's historical stock prices as an HTML table. To bring in the data, we just right click and select import table. Also at the bottom of the same web page is a link to a CSV file of the same data. We'll also just click to open. Furthermore, if we go to a web page like Dig, which has an RSS feed, we can click on the feed link to see it in a table form. And as before, if we wanted, we could save it to our project or we could save it as a completely different file type onto our computer. Additionally, with CSV tables and RSS feeds from the web, we can save these as data bookmarks. These are like normal web favorites, except that each time I open the bookmark, the actual data table refreshes with the most recent data. Okay, as a final thing, we'll quickly explore the more traditional import-export tools, which lets you handle more than one file at a time. To demonstrate, we'll create an export with a file type unique to Strata called the Curix package file. This is a useful file type that lets you take a bunch of tables, scripts, queries, and reports and save them to a single compressed file on your computer. It even maintains your table elements like calculated fields and marks. The Curix package file is particularly useful for archiving projects as well as sharing files with other Strata users. And here, after selecting our files, we click Finish to save it to our computer. Well, that was a quick overview of getting data in and out of Curix Strata. Thanks for watching, and please check out our other tutorial videos for further information.